Columbia, and uh, the best is, is yet to come. I'm convinced of that. And I want to thank all of you. Thank you for bringing friends. Thank you for attending yourself. Uh, thank you for listening and being patient and uh, and just being a part of this experience. Um, I never claim to have all the answers, to have it all together, but I do claim this. I, I believe wholeheartedly in the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And mm -hmm. I believe he's the only way to heaven. And um, I believe that I would be doing a disservice to him and to you if I didn't sit here as, as many opportunities as I'm given and explain to you why there's hope within me and that that hope comes from the grace of God through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And there's no other way. There's no other way. And um, if I told you anything other than that, I would be lying to you. And it might not happen in this life, but at some point in hell, you would look up and say, man, that dude sure could have told me the truth. I might have been unhappy with him or I might not have appreciated it, but he should have shot me straight because this really stinks. And um, I won't have it said of me that that's the case. So uh, I'm sure that at times you think, man, that guy's a, a knucklehead or a fruit loop or whatever. You're right. I mean, I am. But I love Jesus and I love you and I thank you for spending this time together with me. Um, how many of you would say, and I know you've heard this before, you could almost quote it for me, good. How many of you would say that there's just this song in your life that says what you need to hear or says what you want to say and says it better than you can and that, you know, there's just this song in your life that is almost like a pulse for you and it just came along at the perfectly right time for whatever reason and for whatever season in your life. Um, I will tell you, and as you've heard for the last few sessions, I have a lot of those. I have several of those that we've picked out for these sessions. And um, it's almost like there's a soundtrack to my life. And what I've efforted to do here together with you guys over the past days is just to share my life with you, share my, my story with you, sort of in a soundtrack form, one song at a time. So if you remember in our first session last week, we talked about the stairway to heaven. And uh, we climbed aboard that stairway to heaven that is Jesus Christ. And we realized as we climbed aboard it that, that angels are going up and down that stairway to minister on our behalf. And we'll continue to do that until Shiloh comes. Or to put it in terms that everybody will understand until Jesus comes back or the world ends or however you want to look at it. The second night we talked about a song called You Can't Kill Rock and Roll. And I introduced you to the only idol that I've ever really had in my life. And that's the God's Honest Truth of a young man named Randy Rhodes who died at 25 due to a freak accident. But his guitar playing ministered to me more so than lyrics ever could probably. But you put that together with the lyric of this song that said, you know what? Leave me alone. I don't want your promises anymore. Rock and roll is my religion and my law. It won't ever change. You may think it's strange, but you, you can't kill rock and roll. It's here to stay. And that's how I felt. That was the pulse of my life and that was the passion of my heart. And uh, in the process of telling that story, I hope you understand and I hope that you realize that what we addressed in that essence was God must hold the right place in our hearts. If God doesn't hold the right place in our hearts, then the, the heart language he spoke into our lives when he led us on to that stairway to heaven, which is Jesus, will be changed. And our heart language won't speak for Christ anymore. It'll speak for the enemy. And guys, I allowed my heart language to speak for Satan for entirely too long. And that's why I'm so passionate about what I do today. God is the heart language of everyone who has ever been born. God's the heart language. The passion of Jesus Christ and the grace of his sacrifice and the victory of his raising again from the dead, that's the heart language of everyone who's ever been born. But they don't know that until they hear his voice. And y'all, they'll hear his voice through our lives. Our lives must speak the heart language of the cross of the people that we meet. The third song we talked about was uh, kind of a little bit depressing for some of you, I think. I know it's hard for me to tell that part of my story. But we talked about the song by Pink Floyd called Comfortably Numb and the place that that played in my life. Because it spoke to my years and years and years of struggling with drugs and addiction. And uh, that same heart that, that housed the stairway to heaven and still does, that first step between here and glory, that same heart was a dark and dangerous place that worshipped rock and roll music in a, in a drug-induced haze. When the devil controls your heart, he will control your heart language, that your life speaks. I failed to guard my heart. He did exactly that to me. My life's heart language shouted for the devil for years. The misalignment of my passions caused enormous pain to my parents, to my siblings, to my friends, my acquaintances, and most importantly, it caused an enormous amount of grief to my beautiful wife, Shelly, 
It pains me now to look back on all those years that we spent together and that all she had to go through because of my habits and my addictions and, and my hard-headedness. You see, she is, Shelly, Edward Spritchett is the fourth song on my life soundtrack in, in living form. She's the classic girl. She's the classic girl that Perry Farrell and James Addiction sung about it in the in the early 90s. And I thank God for hearing my prayer and sending her into my life when he did. Even greater, though, the most painful feelings I feel about the way that her life struggled because of mine is the ter terrifying way, if you'll remember, that God changed my heart and life. Um, because you, you must understand that God had reached his end with my way of life. God had reached his end with my life choices and the way that I had ravaged his heart language in my life. He, he'd reached the end of it. He'd reached the end of his patience with me. Here's what I know. Here's what I know. I know that I heard the voice of an angry but loving God in my life calling me to confess and repent or die. I know that. I know that I fell on my face and I cried out to him. I know that I realized that I was dragging the love of my life through the mess that I was making of my life and her life with me. I also know that as much as God answered my prayer by sending Shelly into my life, she wasn't the answer to the problems in my life. God was the solution to my problems. I know that I begged him to forgive me and to send a minister to help me, to help us out of the mess that we were in. I called out to God and he heard my desperate cries from his temple. He loosened the noose and stopped the tidal wave for me in my life. Although he didn't send a man to me like he done with my daddy, he did send me to a man. Dr. Bob Teens at Glens Bay Baptist Church in Surfside, South Carolina, was the man that God chose to guide us through some of the most wonderfully vibrant times in our lives, although painful. Change hurts, guys and gals. That's why my alert to you to guard your heart on the front end is so critical, because to make amends on the back end is a painful session that I really hope that you'll avoid because it's very, very tough. 